In this final video for 4.5, let's talk about the best approximation theorem. Uh, this is a pretty big deal as this will eventually lead to the forthcoming least squares problem. Suppose we have some subspace of Fn, call it W, and suppose we have some vector Y that lives in Fn. Y does not necessarily live in W. Then it turns out the orthogonal projection of Y onto the subspace W, we're going to call that Y hat for short, this orthogonal projection y hat is in fact the closest space in w to y itself so i want you to think of it like in the following way like let's say w is a plane in r3 and we have our point uh y which lives here which we can think of it as a vector right so maybe we see something like this this arrow pointing towards it well the closest point that's going to live in w right here to y is going to be this orthogonal projection down here. Y hat. The closest point in W is this orthogonal projection. So that's what you want to see here. The distance between y and y hat is less than or equal to the distance between y and w for any vector w inside of w. And so this is why we call y hat the best approximation of y and w. It's the closest vector in w to y and the proof is pretty slick it's a very it's a it's a quick application of the orthogonal decomposition theorem we saw in the previous video so take any vector little w inside of w well then we're going to take a look at their, the difference between y and w we want to show that the length of this vector is bigger than y minus y hat the orthogonal projection of y into w well, first of all, we're just going to insert y hat into the equation, right? So take y minus y hat plus y hat minus w right there. Notice, of course, y hat minus y hat, they cancel. I just get back a y minus hat here. Uh, excuse me, a y minus w right there. But why is, this, why is this sum important? This is actually the orthogonal decomposition that's guaranteed by the orthogonal decomposition theorem, right? Uh, so notice that y hat belongs to w. The orthogonal projection does. And W is just some arbitrary element inside of big W. And so the difference is a linear combination of vectors in W. Since it's a subspace, it'll be in there. So this vector belongs to W. On the other hand, we've already seen previously that Y minus its orthogonal projection onto W is itself orthogonal to uh, its, or its orthogonal to vectors in W. This is something that belongs to W perp as we've seen. So this is the orthogonal decomposition of Y minus W. In particular, these vectors are perpendicular with each other. This is relevant because of the Pythagorean equation. If we have a sum like this, if we have this orthogonal decomposition, we know that if we take the norm of y minus w squared, this is going to equal the norm of y minus y hat squared plus the norm of y hat minus w squared, like so. Now, these are all non-negative quantities. Uh, because our norm satisfies this positive definite condition. If I were to remove some positive side, some positive quantity on the right-hand side, that makes the right-hand side get smaller, and so we no longer have equality. We have an inequality. Y minus W length squared is greater than or equal to the length of Y minus hat squared. Taking the square root, we've then established the inequality given to us by the best approximation theorem. Let's see an example of such a thing. Let's take two vectors, u1 and u2, 1, 2, 3, and negative 5, 4, negative 1. This will be a spanning set for w, but this is also, in fact, an orthogonal spanning set, an orthogonal basis for w. Notice if I take u1 dot u2, you end up with negative 5 plus 8 minus 3. That gives us a 0 right there. Um, and so then we showed in a previous video that if you take the vector y, that its orthogonal projection onto W is going to be this vector right here, negative 13, 16, and 3. Therefore, the distance between Y and the space, the plane W, is going to be, the distance between the, the plane and the vector is going to be the distance between Y and its orthogonal projection. For which, if we calculate the difference of this thing, right, uh, we're going to take negative 9 minus 13 here. We get Y minus Y hat. This is going to equal a 4. Uh, if we take 20 minus 16, that's also a 4. If we take negative 1 minus 3, that's a negative 4, like so. You can factor out the 4 out, so you get 1, 1, and negative 1. And so then the length of this thing is going to be 4 times the square root of 1, 1, 1. That is, we get the distance of 4 times the square root of 3. So we talked about the distance we can find between a vector and a subspace, but can we do that for any affine set, for any flat? 
Well, up to translation, every flat is just a vector space. So what we could do is if we have if we have some flat capital H and it contains a particular vector little h, we could just subtract little h from it so that h then becomes a subspace. It'll then be uh, a subspace that passes through the origin. Let's now call it W. And so if we want to calculate the distance. So if we're looking for the distance between H and Y, this is the same thing as the distance between W and Y minus H. So we just translated the flat into a flat through the origin, AKA a subspace. And then we calculate the distance there. Well, when you want to calculate this distance, this is going to be the distance between the vector Y minus hat, Y, excuse me, Y minus H and the orthogonal, comp, or the orthogonal projection of Y minus H like so. But as this orthogonal projection is actually a linear transformation, uh, y minus h hat is the same thing as y hat minus h hat. And reordering things, we get y minus y hat minus h minus h hat. And so this then gives us a formula to compute the distance. Uh, we compute the distance between a affine set and any point. So you have to take y minus ortho its orthogonal projection and then subtract from that h minus its orthogonal projection where h is any, of course, any um, any vector in the flat. And y prime and h prime are the orthogonal projections of these vectors into the subspace w.